So yeah. um, they vetoed uh, Tibet and Manchuria. So we're gonna start directly with the third map of the map pool, which is Gran Chaco. Yeah, a special map because it has no TP, and that's probably what influenced their thief pick, which is uh, Japan against Dutch. No. Yeah, definitely. Uh, definitely influencing them a lot. Um, well, what what do you think about this matchup? Mm, I am not quite sure. I think um, I would rather be um, maybe Dutch here because uh, they are quite good uh, on EP. I think the the fifth bank is very relevant in this matchup. In this but matchup, yeah, the bank is definitely really important. Yeah, but, but it's probably a fair match. Um, yeah, the thing is that on this patch, the Yumi's uh, the Yumi card in H3 is again uh, better, so you get the extra range again, I think, uh, yeah. which is quite important when you're fighting against commissions. And um, also, Dutch banks are again full cost, like on RE. So I, I would say it's maybe slightly Japan favored, but it's definitely a close matchup. Uh, anyway, we have here on the top of the map Frontier playing in the color blue as Japan uh, welcome, guys. against. Uh, oh, I have Eco from you. Yeah, so we yeah. Are just good. <laughs> All right, um, and uh, on the other side of the map, Attack Seventy Seven Carp playing as Dutch in the color red. And something very important is a great start here. It's a coin start, which is definitely gonna favor Dutch a lot, and uh, not gonna help Japan at all in this age one. Yep. And uh, we see nothing special in the in the start, like the consulate going on for Japan, and nothing for Dutch, which is very standard here. Is this start? Yeah. Um. Well, recently we've seen people do more and more uh, stuff instead of like the H1 consulate. Um, yeah, the 300 wood from Maito. Yeah, or two villages or three boats. And uh, well, yeah. he's going for the old school stuff, which is a bit slow on coin star. But, um, but against uh, Dutch, is probably not a big problem. Yeah, it should not be a problem, yeah. Um, and uh, one thing to mention is that there's only three berries, so you don't have, as Japan, a second cherry orchard, you have only one, because you have berries. Uh, yeah, I guess. It's not so good. But you, yes. yeah, you get only 3k food out of these berries, and they're also not, like, directly next to your TCs, they're a bit more exposed. So it's just, like, not as good as a second cherry orchard. Um, yeah, usually, there is a lot of map with berries, uh, on start, but usually there is other berries on the map, so that's in the end good for Japan. But here there is no other berries, so yeah, it depends on which map. There's other maps like this. Uh, there's some maps even with like 2k berries. I think on oh. maybe on Arizona you have this, I'm not sure. And then you get only one cherry orchard, and it's quite painful. So basically, um, Japan gonna have to ship the second. Cherry Orchard, uh, the first Cherry Orchard shipment, sorry, maybe one shipment earlier because of this. And yeah, yeah. Dutch working on this XP. Yeah, I thought maybe Japan will contest it now. Yeah, but he's gonna... Yes. He's definitely gonna contest it. And uh, two Japanese explorers are actually stronger than one European explorer if, they, if you keep fighting. Uh, of oh, course, there's the envoy, but it's uh, on the other side of the map. So he could have stayed there and just shoot, especially because uh, the red explorer is already down 100 HP. But he decided to just uh, do some other stuff. Yeah, which it's also fine because there is yeah. this nice food treasure. Yeah, yeah it's definitely okay. Um, Dutch aging already, I mean halfway through aging. Uh, and Japan aging much later, of course. Uh, because Dutch oh, is yeah, one of the. It was the quite fast for Dutch, was it? Or, or maybe oh, it's no, it's not really fast. It's actually kind of the slowest age up you get. It's a uh, 15 villager yeah, 15. age up, which is just normal. Sometimes you see 14, but yeah, no, uh, nothing special. Yeah, oh, 
let's see what happens here with the treasure. Oh, Cop is not paying attention, so he's not gonna be able to steal it. Yep. And uh, Frontier is uh, gonna work on uh, Shrine Booming now. He shipped the uh, Heavenly yep. Kami card in H1. So he's definitely gonna go greedy. Yep, while uh, Dutch is building the bank. It's late, he has, he will have uh, his shipment delayed, I think, or did he sh send it already? Oh yeah, he did, so never mind. And, um, what yeah, because he got he got the 100 XP, so he has no problem getting his first shipment. That's pretty oh, yeah, good, that's actually. <clears throat> he actually almost got his second shipment. Just like he's gonna have two shipments back to back, just because of the 100 XP in the bank. And uh, forwards, I mean, not quite forward, but yeah. Yeah, a bit forward stable. It's kind of a weird position. It doesn't yeah, really. Yeah, I'm not sure about the stable in this matchup. What do you think about it? Um, I think it's pretty much the last thing I would do. Like usually, you see Dutch going naked FF, or you can see the old school scum pike pressure because on RE yeah. you didn't have the the last bank, so you couldn't really match the eco of Japan, and you used to play it colonial a bit and pressure uh, with some pikes to see the shrine and some scums to harass the base. Um, but a stable, I mean, traditionally it's not easy to raid uh, to raid Japan. And the stable yeah. is not even forward enough to make it faster. I mean, it's like what the cab is not gonna be super fast to raid, maybe one or two seconds faster. But it's not safe because it's out of base. So I think that's a very uh, awkward uh, placement. And yeah, um, livestock pair yeah, also. Livestock, uh, it's a bit weird with only four lamas, I think. Yeah, it's definitely not worth it. Uh, especially when you're Dutch and you want to. Uh, be investing yeah, your wood in banks and stuff. Yeah, it could be a market or whatever. Yeah, right. a market and oh. hand dogs or something, yeah, or, or a house and a market or I don't know. Uh, yeah, that's, that's not gonna really pay off. I mean, he's gonna get uh, 1k6 food out of it. Uh, half of it you need to remove because your villagers would be enhanced anyway, and hands are roughly half as fast to gather as Vanas. So it's gonna get an extra maybe 800 food, then you need to remove the decaying of the animals. So he's gonna get maybe 500 food extra and he pays 200 wood now for it. And he's gonna get this 500 yeah, food in like, in like three, four minutes. So uh, meanwhile, he could have been getting an extra bank and it would just give him, give him much more resources. Cause he's only on three banks yeah. right now. Yeah, but that's not so much. On the... Um, the the uh, Japanese player he has already some uh, Shigeru's to deal with the uh, cab and he's building table which is a bit surprising for me but uh, I think it's it's not bad. Um. Yeah, I mean, oh, he lost his explorer. Yeah, that's. And the shrine got denied. Yeah, and about this table, well, honestly, in this case, I think it's gonna do really good. I think he killed the second. Oh well, yeah, Frontier could just finish it. Yeah, he's gonna finish it now, I guess. But um, I think the stable plus Rax is interesting because Dutch is being a bit slow. Like he paid for this livestock pen, he uh, makes some hustles, and he's now dropping two forward Raxes. But I think he's gonna age up before. I don't think he's gonna do this in Colonial. Uh, mm, I don't know. Looks like he's setting up for H three because he doesn't have. Pop space, or is it just gonna? Oh, yeah, oh. no! Now he's made. Okay, he's gonna make skirmishes. Oh yeah, he's he's a bit. I think. No, he's making oh, husks he's now. He's losing the calf. Mm. Losing the calf? What do you mean? Yeah. Not the best start for frontier. Oh, uh, for calf. Sorry. What calf did he lose? I I didn't see. Wait. Well, he just oh. run on the base and attack the wheels, but there was the musketeer. Oh, him, so. yeah, that sucks. Um, well, but to be fair, I mean, there could be a, a, a good timing there. If Cap can pop 10 skirmishes, he could definitely clean up his ashes. I would like, by the way, to point out that Cap is way too afraid of Ashigaros with his Cap. Ashes are a really bad anti-Cap. They have only 35 attack. 
uh, against Cav, and uh, yeah. you can definitely kill them with Huss if there's, like if you're outmassing. Um, but only if they are out of base, I guess, because if you fight them and then there is a Minutemen. Yeah, sure, but no. you can also just go back when the Minutemen pop, and then you force yeah, Minutemen and it's good. Uh, instead, Frontier, um, Carp is fighting in, in base now, yeah, and uh, now there's some Carp to snare him. So now, oh. of why is Frontier going back? Frontier could have kept oh, snaring, no. but he's gonna catch him again now, hopefully. Yeah. Uh, so that's just a lot of Cav wasted for Carp. And uh, yeah. Frontier is not really paying attention with his ashes right now, so actually yeah. it's gonna be quite good for Carp. Um, no, but no, he knows his one more. Okay. Mm, and there is Kiln's coming. Yeah, uh, the problem is that I can see some calf popping soon, probably. Uh, the last batch uh, was. Yeah, there is. Uh, oh no, there is no calf in queue. Yeah, Only, okay, uh, right. You miss. I, I think he should queue some calf because um, Musketeer calf is really hard for Dutch to counter because they don't have a, a good anti cav in H2 so if you just make Nagis it's gonna be a lot of trouble for for Dutch to answer although he did ship the 8 pikes yeah yeah which is gonna help for a while but I mean they're not infinite or something uh, then he's gonna have yeah, to train there pikes is, there is you miss uh, it's not that good in the end well I kind of like that he ships the pikes still because it's just too risky to keep pushing like this without pikes because you see there's a, a Nagi in queue and he would definitely have a lot of trouble to fight against Musk Hus without anything to block and uh, and to kill the calf. Uh. Yeah. And uh, I think it's a good time to go now for, for uh, Dutch because they are eating the Lamas already. Or maybe they could wait a bit but time is in his strong uh, time for him. But there is no the boss popping, so Japan will be fine defending, I think. Yeah, you can't really pressure like that against Japan, I think, when you touch. You, you don't have any really scary timings in Colonial. Um, yeah, and there's some idle Huss. Honestly, yeah. he could have done something maybe with his extra Huss, and uh, maybe sending the pikes in in cover mode or something. But uh, right now it looks like I, I don't know, it's kind of close, but Japan is probably just gonna pop something and be fine, I think. There's not enough skirmishers to uh, to really do something right now, sadly. Mm. So with uh, some cabin through for Japan. Yeah, and uh, the thing is that yeah, he Carp invested into double racks and he didn't really mass skirmishers, he made much more hus actually. Um, so it's kind of a waste of food, same for the livestock pen. So yeah, he has only, uh, well, now four banks, finally, but he had to chop a lot of wood, which means that he gets less out. Meanwhile, Japan is just matching the Dutch ego, and he yes, also... It's still uh, close and even a bit Dutch favored. Cool. Yeah, it's a bit Dutch favored, but this is just like what you see on the graph. But the reality yeah. is that... Um <coughs> Sorry. The reality is that Japan got better market upgrades for one thing, uh, and for for the another thing, just better units and better composition. Also, the fact that Japan gets the export, which is a resource, uh, a free resource kind of like these bows are just for free compared to Dutch. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and maybe also uh, mm, Japan has already uh, enough population space for. Yeah, he doesn't need to build houses. That's true. Uh, it's just good for Japan at this point. This kind of colonial fight is eventually just r gonna result in in Japan winning. Also, um, Japan got upgrades. Um, well, Dutch as yeah. well, but uh, there's more upgrades for Japan with the daimyo and the Japanese consulate. And and yeah, like Dutch just losing oh. his comes because he can't really. He doesn't have anti calf basically. Uh, he has yeah, some pikes, but well. they are away. He needed mm. more skirmishers so and... Idle us. yeah. Yeah, um, this is not looking good for Dutch. No, he doesn't have any ranged infantry and he's not going to be able to deal with his Ashigaros. And the Daimyo is in, 
Um, I kind of dislike that the daimyo is fighting like this because it's uh, what well, it could die and you don't really want your daimyo to die. Yeah, it's but risky, but you can also dunk a bit with him and then go back. Yeah, sure, if you go back, yeah. But when you get snared, it's not uh, always easy, but yeah, uh, if Frontier can pull it back, then it's definitely good to tank a bit with it. Uh, the Daimyo got 30% range resistance, 650 HP, so that's worth mm -hmm. more than two Nagis uh, worth of tanking. Uh, yeah, yeah. So. But it's still whiskey, I agree. Yeah, you need to uh, make sure you don't waste it. Oh, on the card here, will it, will it get caught? He might get caught, yeah. Uh, one has getting caught. Yeah, that's so okay. So, that's alright. Uh, oh, maybe a Divine Strike on this low HP has... <laughs> no, okay. Um, there's more units there also. I feel like Carp is sending his units a bit everywhere on the map, like... But he has quite a lot of stuff right now. Still. Yeah, he's pro stealing military population. Yeah, I, I think Japan is just gonna win because of better units, but, uh, yeah, but it, it is kind over, of right? no, it's not over. It is kind of close. Uh, I just don't see Carp winning by staying colonial forever. I feel like he needs to do something now. Also, he's being passive. Usually, you want to be aggressive against Japan overall because they have a great late game, uh, even a great middle game. So, um, yeah. And one thing uh, I want to say is that uh, Japan didn't send the cherry orchard uh, so early in the end, so he was idle on food for long, and now he's stacking a lot of food and gold due to this. Yeah, I think he maybe went for the normal build order, because, wait, let me check. One, two, uh, oh, he kind of shipped one shipment too much, yeah. And he also got 2k less in berries, so... But but he had some berries left. Why? Oh, he has two k food on berries. Oh yeah, I think he forgot about them or something. Maybe because the market uh, hides them a bit. Yeah, that sucks. That really sucks for Japan. Uh, but well, still not a huge deal, I guess. Yes, especially since Dutch is uh, on berry as well and shipped uh, colonial militia, which is very really good against Japan in my opinion. Yeah, uh, but uh, Capri got a lot of units out. Yeah, but that's the minute man. Oh, right, yeah, I was wondering how he got this mass, but <laughs> uh, yeah, it's minute men. Okay, I don't know why you would call Colonia Militia so far from your TC. I mean, imagine okay. with so many hussars, you could have popped 21 minute men right on the face of Japan if Japan would commit a bit more. But yeah, yeah okay, well. That's not very useful right now. Could have been a skirm attack upgrade or something. Yeah, it would be better probably. Because 21 uh, 1 HP unit men are not gonna help so much. And most players are stacking quite a lot of resources. Hmm. I don't know if they want to age or just are a bit miss macro. I think that's mostly miss macro because it's uh, not so easy to macro when you have so much eco. They both have a re uh, pretty good eco. Um, yeah. Flontia needs to uh, switch a bit to gold, basically. Mm. But he doesn't really have any safe mine. He got two mines on the right and the oh, left okay. of his base, but they are quite far. Oh! Um. Look at this. Oh. <laughs> that's big. Oh yeah, that's the cave is huge. really out of position. I don't know what's go. Oh, and the ash, the, the ash is running in the in the cave. Like gonna get some good hits, even a couple clubs there. So uh, that's yeah. Daimo going down. Oh yeah, what we mentioned, right? Should have stayed in the back, but but still, like I think this is an easy cleanup for Japan. Mm, yeah. Yeah, yeah. It's it's, it's a one-sided fight. He just got such a good engagement, and anyway, he got better yeah. units, like with the Daimyo, two upgrades in. No upgrade for Dutch, he's going for the church card, so he probably wants to go greedy and make more banks, but um, if he can't match the military, and if he needs to spend like one card and 
uh, more resources into making banks, I think he's gonna just die, honestly. Yeah, yes, it makes uh, the unit even uh, weaker to uh, do this upgrade of uh, charge card because they are slower after it. Yes, yeah, this is true, it's even gonna hurt his military, so uh, yeah, it's just gonna be really an awkward timing for, for, for Dutch there to ship that card. Yeah. And uh, there's quite a lot of Nagis, less than Hussars, but with the Ashes in the back, the Hussars are going to die. So then the Skirmishers will, will get caught by the Nagis eventually. Um, if they fight right now, it's going to be a, a, a total cleanup for Blue. It's totally going to clean Red up. Yeah, that's. I think yes, this game is over, honestly. Because there is yeah. no combat against Japan, usually. Also, the scores. Uh, Japan usually has an, a bad score and uh, Dutch has an inflated score because of the banks. Um, so it, when you get to this kind of score, it looks really bad for Dutch. Yeah. Mm, did he? Mm, no, he didn't do the charge card. So that was basically a shipment for nothing in the end. Yeah, could have been like anything else, would have been better than that at this point. Um, Alright, yeah, so Flonty is cleaning up and it's gonna be GG. I think, yeah. um, I don't see, I don't see what the um, Dutch can do at this point. He's gonna also, I mean obviously at, at 20 minutes you don't have hunts in your base anymore, so he's got Vils hunting uh, over the map and stuff and he's gonna just like get pressured and, and lose. Yeah, um, he could resign at this point. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's, it's game over. Um, I know I, I've been calling too many game over recently, uh, but <laughs> this one is really over. Yeah. And he's trying to drop three Raxes, but he doesn't have any food income. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he won't do anything. And Frontier can even age, you know, he has the resources. Yeah, he's gonna age now. He's gonna go straight to industrial, skipping the H3 directly. <laughs> Yeah, can you break two wonders at the same time? Though? What? Can you break two wonders at the same time? No, f no, no. Well, no. You of course you unlock the upgrades. Uh, I mean, industrial age is an upgrade like another. You un unlock the upgrades when you reach the uh, fortress, basically, just yeah. like you unlock veterancy or whatever. So, um, no, no. Uh, he's. No, I was just joking because he was floating so many resources, but. Um, well, he will. He would probably go H four directly after, honestly. But uh, Carp is resigning before, so that's game one. One zero for Frontier, and uh, yeah, good game. game. Yeah, really not the standard game, but quite interesting still. Yeah. And look at that fight at one at uh, seventeen minutes. There was one hundred pop of stuff for for. Oh, wow. Dutch actually, and uh, well, there was the Minutemen, of course, but still, he had a, a lot of units, and he just like got yeah, an but awful I think trade. It's what happened when you you run on the map with uh, the unit all the time? They are well never to all together, so that was uh, the risk for uh, Dutch in the end. Yeah, of course, and like running on the map with a couple units is fine, and, like raiding and stuff. But when you send all your calf to burn shrines, uh, and <laughs> The Japanese player has line of sight, obviously, because you're burning his shrine, so he knows yeah. you there's no cav, and then he can just try to push, just go middle map and uh, uh, hope you will find some skirmishers, and yeah, that's what happened, and this cost the game to, to carp. I think he was behind because, like we mentioned, uh, Japan is just scaling much better than Dutch, especially in Colonial, but still... Uh, the, yeah, Dutch tried to do some early damages with uh, herself, but it didn't work at all, I think. Yeah. Got yeah. Any settlers on the yeah, so so Dutch was a bit behind because of that, but it was not over. But after that fight, it was just like game losing. Um, yeah. So, all right. Uh, I guess so that's it for game one. On the next map, uh, which uh, should be Hudson uh, Bay, I think. Yeah, yeah, Hudson Bay, and then we will get the uh, high plains. So we. Game. Yeah, uh, alright, I'm gonna join now. First. Yeah. Um, I will be right.
right back in uh, like one minute. Yeah, sure. All right, so uh, Fluntia locking Germany. Uh, we've seen Lord Raphael already play Germany on this map in the previous uh, series I casted earlier. And uh, it's overall um, a good pick on that map. Uh, just because it's quite a standard map and uh, there is um, no reason to not pick Germany or some other standard seed like France or whatever. But it's not. It's also not an especially insane pick on that map, and uh, Carp is counter picking with Brits, uh, which is a counter pick. Uh, Brits are definitely winning this matchup, especially on uh, on EP. But it's not totally one sided. It's still rather close. Um, there's definitely chances for Germany to win this. So yeah. We'll see how this goes. And we're just waiting for Bewina to come back in a, in a few seconds to, um, to green up and go in this game. Yeah, no problem. Um, all right, here we go in the game two of this best of three between Frontier and uh, Attack Seventy Seven Carp. Yeah. Uh, one zero for Frontier, quite huge in a best of three. Obviously, it's already match point. Yeah, let's pick on the. But no, he had to pick first, so it's probably not a good matchup for him, Germany against uh, Great. It's definitely not what you would dream of as Germany, yeah. Uh, but like I was saying when you was away, it's not uh, the most awful matchup for Germany. It's all right, but uh, yeah, especially since uh, we got net from the uh, last patch. Yeah, slightly, but this nerf honestly doesn't matter that much compared to like ten less HP on Ulans. I think it, it's uh, like the the German nerf is bigger for sure. I don't know, I think it's uh, about the same. I mean, 5 wood here and there, you know, so it's uh, like slowing you down slightly. But yes. 10 less HP on your main unit is uh, quite big. Anyway, uh, we'll see how, how they start. do. Wood oh. start, yeah. Um, well, it's good for boss thieves, but I would call it better for Germany, honestly. Because the early trading post is just such a wonderful thing for Germany. So, a uh, Brit could build one as well, and uh, it's, it would be not bad with uh, good pressure he just uh, took, but apparently he's not going for that. Yeah, of course, Brits can also get stuff out of their wood and even a trading post, but um, that's not as. Uh, I mean, the trading post is more important for Germany than it is for Brits, obviously. Yeah, yeah, great. Uh, I think he can make a market though. He got 50 coin and uh, he can oh just yeah, build a market possible. and get hand dogs. He could have also but gone for the TP here. Yeah. It doesn't change much the market of our manor, I think. It's almost the same because, like, you, it's on it's on very early on, like, you you will have less than 10 settlers in the beginnings and you transition, you won't have settlers on food. So, yeah, in but the end, it's almost the yeah, it's not a huge difference, but I kind of like the market. When when you don't have to go aggressive or to be oh. really fast, oh wow, a great trading post. Uh, the, the, the market means you can get your wood upgrade in the start of the transition. And uh, hand dogs is still more than one bill. And uh, I, I kind of like it, but then, yeah, it's not a huge difference. And he builds a great TP. Post, it's a big difference. <laughs> like, I don't like it because maybe he isn't a war that you can't buy CDB's uh, anti-H2, is it? Um, yeah, it's in H2 indeed. And it's anyway not like you want to train extra bills in H1 because it's going to slow your age up down so much. I think his plan is just to get villages directly at the start of the transition, like b chop less for manors and like have more villages and food and make CDB's. 
which is really greedy but I mean the pro the, the first problem sorry yeah go ahead you can't do that because it's in h2 oh uh, yeah oh sorry yeah of course just choose less yes it's a total waste of food right now and you know what's the worst is about it I mean no okay the worst thing is that you waste 200 wood at this point and you could be making one mana and a half basically but the, yeah, the second worst thing is that it already shows on the top right corner so this is a big flash on Flonty's screen like Alert Brit is going super greedy so um, Flonty already knows the plan and he already can try to adapt for example taking directly a stagecoach in early colonial or even just raiding a lot or being aggressive or whatever but it just gives so much information to Frontier. But in the end, he's not going uh, greedy because he's aging with only villager. And yeah, I think he wants the upgrade of the the natives that gives cheaper buildings, maybe. Yeah, this you can get in age one, and you need 175 coin. But if I remember correctly, it takes a long time to research. Ah, uh, this I don't know. But anyway, I don't think it's so good to do. Well, just click like on the on the red TC or something, and you can see how slowly it's researching. It's one minute. There's like I think three or four different times for upgrades. Like some stuff research super quickly, like big buttons or whatever. Then you got the hand dog stuff from the market or uh, this kind of stuff, and then you have the really slow upgrades. Like stagecoach always takes like one minute, and this as well. So basically, he's gonna delay his boom because he probably wants to wait for this upgrade before he starts building more manors, and it's gonna just be super, super slow. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I really don't like it, but well. meanwhile, German is going uh, much more standard with uh, the market now uh, on the TP in the beginning, so we'll see. But he has a settler work here, so maybe he will go aggressive. Yeah, I mean. You wouldn't usually go aggressive against Brits. You you can't rebuild a front base against Brits uh, as Germany. But when you see the, the Kree trading posts, why would you not, you know? Yeah, but still it's strange because Brit is not going really greedy in the end. Like he has only one man or so. I'm not sure what's going on. Uh, oh, and he shipped Virgin... Um, yeah, Virginia Company as well, so... And he doesn't have a shipment now. This is gonna be horrible. I'm sorry to say this, but it's gonna be absolutely horrible because he needs to wait, I don't know how long before he gets his shipment. He's gonna build men also, he's gonna get XP, but still, like... He has already in H2 since 30 seconds without a shipment. Yeah, it works. It's like gonna the shipments came in H2, I think, Virginia Company. Yeah. He was H2 when he got Virginia Company in, but he clicked it in transition at least. But uh, before he can click his first H2 shipment, well, he's gonna get it when he pops his mana now. So it's like five minute, 10, it's one minute later. So he's delaying his 700 wood for one minute. So he's again being really, really slow. So right. he's gonna get nothing out and uh, he's just gonna have a very weak eco at the moment because he got only 50 pop of mana. And uh, yeah, I don't know what is the plan. He's even building a training post now. It's a bit strange as well. Maybe he thinks German will try to stage coach, but it's not the case. Yeah. Not, but what is good is that he's building are, are cheap, so maybe a training post is not so bad. But he has miners for even cheaper with building and companies want to make it uh, useful so you need to build a lot of panels when you ship it yeah honestly then i would have liked him to build his uh, tp in transition at least to get a bit of xp and uh, get virginia company in earlier and then be able to have a shipment in h2 maybe if he got this tp in transition at least yeah, or, or just in h1 instead of the directly. sorry he could have get it directly instead of the quick tp and then uh, yeah Honestly, there was a lot of things Brit could have done, uh, and I think pretty much everything would have been better than this. But we will see how he gets away with it, maybe. Now he can definitely boom a lot, I mean his manners are super cheap. Um, let's see, Virginia Company is 35%. By the way, Brit got a heavy water deck, but he doesn't have any dock. I don't understand this deck. 35 
Okay, so it's sixty percent cheaper manors, which means they will cost something like uh, sixty wood or something. That's really good. And he he already cocked that in uh, in uh, economic population. So yeah, he's booming hard now. Sixty wood for a villager is really cheap, but he needs to handle the pressure and he needs to deal with his deck because uh, yeah, he got let's see. One, two, three, four, five, six water cards, and he doesn't have even a dock. And he also got the trade, uh, coin to wood trade, <laughs> which um, is not gonna help, I think. Yeah, I don't think he will use it. I never seen an. I think I've never seen a sub deck, a one v one sub deck with so many cards in age one. There's seven cards in age one. I guess that's true. I'm nothing in age three almost. Like more card in H one than in H three. Yeah. It's, uh, standard. Yeah. When you remove the free gates, there's really nothing in H three. There's no calf, uh, calf combat, no one uh, k wood, no eight wheels, no I don't know whatever else you can imagine. So yeah. um, it's I'm gonna it's probably gonna hurt him. And he was really greedy, but now he's going six longbow, six musketeers. So at the end of the day, uh, his eco is not gonna be even so insane. Because he didn't ship five bills and he didn't ship six hundred wood. Well, he has four manors anyway. To be fair, but yeah, but he didn't do any CDBs, which is strong, strong right? Oh yeah, when you paid for the trading post, you might as well train CDBs. It's probably yeah, even right. better. It's better, I think, than getting the upgrade anyway. So yeah, and Flantia doing over a good job at raiding. Uh, maybe over committing here a bit. He's gonna lose too much cav. Mm, maybe not. <laughs> we will start. He will. Yeah, three lands, four lands. Yeah. Um. And Frontier is now in H three. Yeah, Frontier just made a couple units in Colonia and then aged. But I feel yeah, like he, he could have done. Much with this uh, colonial units. Yeah, he he didn't really do so much, and uh, well, I, at least he forced. I don't know if he forced him, but at least Carp decided to react with six longbows and six musketeers. So I guess that's one thing this unit accomplished. But yeah, I don't know. I mean, he could have got stagecoach. He could have burned this down. I mean, there's a lot of things Germany could have done in colonial instead of that. And I think it would have been better than this weak crossbow pike pressure. And when you go crossbow pike and you never ship eight bows, you usually or, or wood crates to mass from Toraxes, you usually don't get so many units out. Yeah, one will undying for free again. Yep. I mean, he's examined by the way to run, so he wants to do more probably. <laughs> Whoa, <laughs> four dogs on the and schooners. Uh, so that's like seven seven docks or something because it's forty percent faster training. Um, I don't think Brits can support a seven dock boom, especially uh, the fishing boats are fifty wood and not forty wood, so it's even harder. Um, I I don't I don't understand this. Uh, five docks, is it trolling or something? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe he's not aware of changes on a turn. It's still uh, the same like on Airy. Yeah, but even on RE, you wouldn't go five dogs. Yeah, even on RE, it's a bit. Especially not when Germany just hit age three and he's gonna start shipping units, you know? You're not gonna build five dogs now. Um, yeah, it will be so hard. It's the worst timing to start a, a water boom, probably. And uh, also, he built two trading posts. I mean, it's just so greedy. He basically made everything as greedy as possible, except that he didn't ship five years and he didn't uh, make CDBs, but he got just so much greedy stuff and I don't know if he's gonna be able to hold this German pressure now yeah he's building stables no mm, put them all in the activity no, three stable ah uh, no two yeah okay but uh, they're gonna be denied oh yeah it's a really classic spot to get raided I you you should not build stuff here now because it's a spot with resources on top and you usually get raided there uh, now he's rebuilding in the back, which is better, yeah. yeah. Well, at least the stables are only 150 wood, so that's one good thing. Yeah, I think he wants uh, as much as possible this upgrade. Yeah, probably trying to, to make it pay off. 
Uh, by the way, only hunt dogs upgrade and the HP for villagers, but no more greedy market upgrades. So it's kind of a really weird build order for, for Brits because he's going super greedy, super slow, but he's not shipping five wheels, he's not getting market upgrades, it's and not training CDBs, so he doesn't even have such an insane eco at the end of the day. You could have 60 wheels at 12 minutes as Brits without water, without ju just shipping five wheels and making max menos, and you get 12 uh, at 12 minutes 60 wheels anyway. So yeah. I, I don't know, like this was just super expensive to boom like this and he doesn't even get an insane eco out of it like if he had like 90 wheels right now i would say yeah okay you know but with yeah, 55 first one, think, but yeah i don't think he's a 1v1 player to be yeah, fair he did lose he did lose 18 wheels maybe that's why he doesn't have he has only 60 wheels so he could be on almost 80 wheels right now to be fair but still you can't expect to defend this push now without messing um. and yeah he made a lot of uh, of bolts to fish but oh, Col that one, he knows that he lost all his villager colonial militia are coming in now <laughs> uh, probably okay I mean he's about to get totally right clicked on his TC so I guess colonial militia makes sense if he yeah. can just get some hus out at the same time, but he's wasting them. If he could mass like 10 hussars and pop the Minutemen, he would have a chance to defend. But even even then, he's one age behind and he doesn't even have a better eco than Germany at this point. Not much. Yeah, this is going down. All these villagers. Oh, he deleted the wall, which was a, a good call, but there's uh, the Olands behind, so... Yeah. A nice move from Frontier to go there with the Ulan. Yeah, to just split and, uh, and, and trap. Yeah. Um, there's no water cards in deck for Frontier, which could be a problem, but I honestly think he's going to be able to win this game without water. I mean, even look at the scores, it's not possible. It's like yeah, Red got half the score. Lost 42 villagers now. Oh, really? <laughs> oh, boy. Yeah. I guess yeah. the game with Sompu and Lord Raphael earlier were also uh, they lost 69 wheels boss combined. <laughs> but uh, yeah. And, and Red is just always popping units inside of the mass of blue units and they just die. They really just yeah. die. Like. And <laughs> Frontier is going H4. Oh well. Yeah, yeah. it's really over. Yeah, I think it's okay to go H4 at this point. He, he, I guess he identified the water boom because he had skirms on top, so he probably saw the docks. So by going H4, you just get a tech advantage, uh, like a bigger tech advantage. And then uh, you can, even if the other guy is on water, you get factories, you get uh, upgraded cannons and stuff. But Because I guess Carp is going to try to make warships now to hold uh, the sea. But... Um, This DC is probably not gonna go down, honestly. CM is doing a lot of damage and there's still the Minutemen potentially gonna yeah. pop. Yeah, I think it won't go down. But I think it doesn't really matter. Yeah. And there is uh, the only villagers of the that are all inside. The yeah. But it's only 13 villagers, so... It's yeah. not even a huge deal if he. I mean, Frontier that doesn't. He doesn't know how many wheels are inside, but it doesn't matter so much if this TC goes down. It's only certain wheels. Uh, what matters is that Carp is stuck in Colonial and that he has less eco. And that Frontier is industrial. Yeah. And a couple of packs took down the red trading post, so he might even get a stagecoach soon. Yeah, probably. And he ships the uh, factory, you know. Yeah, I just hope he's not gonna drop it too close. Um, hmm, I'm not sure if this can get sniped by the monitors. It's only 70 range on EP. No, I think it uh, it can't be sniped from here on EP. Probably not, Leah. Maybe the TC can get sniped, but not the factory or something. Um, anyway, before Cap can make monitors, um, there's a long way to go. 
Yeah, and I, I think the monitors attack with net as well. So don't maybe they don't even kill a factory in one shot, even two of them. I don't think it was nerfed. Wasn't it? Oh, I think so, but maybe I'm wrong. If I, remember, if, so if I remember correctly, the cost is it's like 200 less wood, and the cooldown is maybe... I don't remember. I know they changed the cooldown of the uh, yeah, ability. It's faster. it's faster, yeah. And I think the range is less, and that's yeah. it. So it's not... Overall, it's not a, a nerf, it's just a nerf of the long range attack. But the long range attack was the real problem, right? I mean, monitors yeah. are not even good at fighting other warships, so it's fine if they are a bit cheaper. Uh, yeah, yeah, the only thing is the long what range. What I wanted to say is that he, he can't kill the factory. With yeah, probably not, yeah. But I don't think the attack of the long range shot was changed. I think it's only the range. But, anyways, these factories are probably out of range, so yeah. Coverings now. Uh, yeah, he's probably the probably ready to fight warships, but Cop doesn't even have any warship actually. So yeah, not even in two. Just the front is making a dock now, so he will be able to clean up all this water. Yeah, and the uh, curves can even deny a bit of fishing. Yeah, um, and Frontier has some um, more cars in two. Probably to kill the TC and uh, other stuff. Yeah, at this point you might as well make mortars or petards, right? Uh, when there's no resistance from the other player and there's just a bunch of buildings, you might as well just like go heavy on siege power and, and clean it up. Yeah, he, he's a bit uh, right about this game, I think, because if he, you look at the score, yeah, you know it's that it's over. Yeah, I think Frontier is kind of like annoyed that uh, this game is uh, taking so long to finish. Because, yeah, it's honestly, obviously over. Oh, I mean, even with a uh, even with a Miracle, uh, Red wouldn't win now. I mean, H H4 Ulan against H2 Haas now. Yeah. Yeah, so now like, Frontier can literally go pure Ulan without any problem. And clean yeah, up anything that comes out. And the uh, is building some uh, wheat soldier. Only one, actually. <laughs> yeah. Well, he can tank if you put it in front. 300 HP. Yeah. Oh, so mortars are in bad position. Yeah, he can re he can make some more. <laughs> it's not a problem. Oh, we uh, now we're gonna see the fight. Of course, the Ulans are gonna totally clean up. Uh, <laughs> Frontier even microing too much actually, like wasting kind of, but pff, doesn't matter. He could have even gone yeah. in in trample mode to show dominance at this point. <laughs> yeah, easy. Oh, Six yes, there, there was some canoes, but he's going the GT. Yeah, it's just so over. Frontier even ships six settler wagons. <laughs> he has now like eighty, the equivalent of eighty villages. Yeah. Yeah. Well, was just kind of a weird plan for Brits, and uh, it kind of worked in Colonial. Like he was able to defend actually, and to even kill some blue units. But then there was just no, no, nothing after. Like to to deal with the German H three push, you need to be ready and have. If you say Colonial, you need to have a lot of units. If you go fortress, you need to age up quite early because you have slow age. So uh, anyway, you need to be ready for the fortress German push, and he obviously was not ready, and uh, he just lost the game yeah. there. Like around around ten minutes, he had nothing to defend, and he just lost. Yeah, even when I played against dictator, I went on water as well. But from the beginning, I think he did a lot to slow against German, and uh, here he, it was much slower. So. He really can't afford to do this kind of things against against German. Yeah. There's some greedy stuff you can try to do against Germany, like the Virginia Company, some IFF, which actually probably works just because you can make some small walls and have your longbow sitting in base and the Holland has solo HP that it's not easy to push in for Germany, but but I mean you can't go so greedy that you get five docks 
and two trading posts and one native post with the upgrade and uh, full manors and whatever you know it's just yeah, yeah. not realistic in 1v1 and even in team I don't see this working honestly but uh, all right yeah well so it's 2-0 for Frontier so yeah. um, he won this uh, best of three and he's gonna move on to the round of uh, 16 of the second chance tournament and what is who is his uh, opponent? I uh, I don't know. Are you in the second chance? Oh no, you lost uh, the dictator. Yeah, I'm out now. <laughs> uh, I can check quickly before we end the stream. Um, second chance elimination brackets. Yep. Frontier is gonna fight. Probably Mongobillion next. Uh, Mongobillion still needs to win his round of 32, but I think he will win it. So it's probably going to be Mongobillion against Frontier, which uh, could be an interesting match. Yeah, definitely. All right. So uh, well, that's uh, it. Well, that's I it. Think this is the end of this, uh, yeah, just, it's. I don't know. 2010 and uh, for me 2010 okay so in 20 minutes we get another stream so I'm gonna leave the overlay on for a while we're probably gonna switch uh, the streamer because my computer is uh, I don't think it's gonna handle best of seven with some water play from Kinesi honestly so um, yeah thanks for watching guys and stay tuned in 20 minutes we get Taban against Kinesi round of eight of the main tournament and um, I uh, I hope you will be there to watch, and I hope you're excited. And thanks for casting with me, B winner. Yeah, thanks for you for the casting. It was really good. All right. Yeah, it was nice. So uh, yeah, see you soon, guys.